Hello everybody, welcome to the lunch table. My name is Evan, today I'm joined with Zach, Joel, and Nick. And today is the most anticipated episode of every year. It is our 2024 NFL season predictions. Um, we're going to go through every team, give our predictions for how we think they're going to do. <coughs> then we're going to do playoff predictions and award predictions uh, later. It's going to be a long one. Let's, it is. Yeah. Let's just hope it's not a So crazy. buckle up and keep on for the ride. We're going to start with the NFC this time. Usually you start with the AFC and then we kind of skimp the NFC. So we're going to give the a NFC some love today. Um, Shout out the NFC. Mm -hmm. A lot better than it was last year. Yeah, There's a few are. really good teams. They, they surprised us last year. They did. They are sure. more interesting. Um, but yeah, so starting off with the NFC, let's go to the NFC East. So we're going to do it a little bit differently than we have in the past. We're going to go... Uh, team by team instead of division by division. That way everybody can kind of give their two cents on each team. So <clears throat> let's start off with the Dallas Cowgirls. The Cowboys. Cowgirls. They've been, uh, uh, Zoom in here. They've been in the um, news a lot recently um, for multiple reasons, which if you are a sports fan, you would know. You probably know. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. But who wants to start us off with the Cowboys? I can do it. All right, Joel. Um, I had the Cowboys doing this year. I have them making the playoffs as the five seed. Um, I have them going 11 and six. Uh, the big question marks we all, I mean, if you pay attention oh. to the, to the. I just noticed that something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Cowboys winning 13 games. <laughs> if, you, if you pay attention to the NFL the headlines, yeah. and the headlines, anything <laughs> that's going on, you see all the news going on with, um, Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones CD, Lamb. CD Lamb, Micah Parsons, Dak to Prescott. name Dak Prescott, to name a few. Um, so there's a lot of question marks heading into the season on what it's gonna like, what's it's gonna be like week one. If I had to guess, I hope that they can figure it out. Figure it they out. They better figure one. it out. Are you kidding me? Because if they don't, it's a week one L to the Browns. Yeah. So, I mean, we we've, we've seen that this offense can be in a high powered offense. So that's something that's promising. And the defense is good, too. Now with Quinn gone, I don't know how that's going to change things. But you still have the talent that's there to go. The roster is still elite. Yes, the roster is elite. It's just a matter of can they get this off the field. Yeah. Um, thing, things take I feel care. like we say this every year about the Cowboys. I, it's I, like I, I, I their roster is Super Bowl caliber, but they just don't ever put it together. And for that reason, I have them barely making the playoffs. I have them as my seventh seed. I have them at 10 and 7. Um, I think the internal – this team should be a 12 or 13 win team, no doubt about it. They have a potential offensive player of the year, potential defensive player of the year, an elite O-line, an elite defense, and a good enough quarterback to win you those kind of games. But they just – they don't put it together for whatever reason. And Jerry Jones just doesn't want to pay his best players for whatever – I don't understand. And then he says he doesn't – yeah, he said he's not, he doesn't have any urgency of getting extensions done for a top like five receiver and a top five defensive player in the NFL, which baffles my mind. But um, I have him at ten and seven. I was this close to leaving him out of the playoffs entirely That's because insane. I I think their internal issues are are real. It, it's it's a cancer. Yeah, it's it's not a enjoyable locker room right now. Um, but I I think their talent is going to be too much to overcome. Um, I don't see them missing. I, I could see them missing the playoffs, but I'm not predicting it to happen. Mike McCarthy's on the hot seat too. Yeah, he, he should have been, been fired two years, years ago. Yeah, yeah, he should not even be there right now. Yeah. Um, I also have the Cowboys at ten and seven. Um, I think I, I think CD Lamb's going to get a contract. I don't, I'm not really worried about that. Um, they're they're going to get it done. He's just Joe Judge is just being an idiot. But they're going to get it done. You're not going to not pay CD. So he's going to be there week one. Um, but the only problem is we've seen once players hold out for, like, majority of training camp, they kind of start off slow. And they have, like you said, Joel, <clears throat> open against the Browns, who we'll talk about later, who isn't too shabby of a team. Um, and they got a little bit of a – they play three NFC, AFC North teams in their first five weeks. So those will all be tough games. Definitely. Um, and Dak coming off of his best season in recent memory, 
Um, we'll see if he can replicate that again. Um, but I mean, this team, they didn't really do anything in free agency. They didn't really add any massive, at massive players to really works. They brought Zeke back their team. Twice. Yeah, they lost Tony Pollard, Tyrone Smith, um, drafted Tyler Guyton, who's a, uh, who we've talked about as a uh, kind of a project tackle or tackle there. But um, <clears throat> like Nick said, Dan Quinn's gone, so they have uh, Mike Zimmer in as um, defensive coordinator. So that defense is, def- is going to change a little bit, but you still have Micah Parsons. Trayvon Diggs should be healthy. Yeah. Um, Deron Bland. Deron Bland. Yeah. yeah, he's coming off of a great season. And then, I mean, that offense was still prolific last year with Dak, CD, Jake Ferguson's pretty good. Um, I think Zeke's going to be decent. But um, it's really if – that offense is ran through CD. So if CD gonna misses say. any time or anything happens, then that offense is going to derail drastically. But um, they've had three consecutive 12 and five seasons, but I'm going to have them go 10 and seven this season. All right. I got them at 11 and six, winning the division. Uh, that's okay. That's crazy. Today. I think that we're, <laughs> we're off to a hot start. I think that we're going to see a similar <laughs> season as last year. I mean, this is pretty much the same team. I mean, yeah. This is pretty this much is, the same. This is pretty much the same team. I, I, was, I, I mean, I, I don't nobody's see nobody's repeating that division, right? Yeah. yeah. Then I was gonna bring up this point. When you're in a division with the Washington Commanders and the New York, New York Giants. Giants, that's about four easy wins right there. Should exactly. be. Should be. Should be. You're only competing with the Eagles, and they are also a team that imploded last year for God knows why. Because they didn't have a secondary. We'll get to like, the, we'll get to I the mean, Eagles. It's, <laughs> it's a similar situation with both teams. I, I mean, I, the Cowboys team really didn't change. Um, there's a lot of drama in the locker room, but, I mean, we still got, what, three weeks of the season starts? I think they'll get it figured out. I mean, Jerry Jones isn't that stupid. He's going to give a contract to CeeDee Lamb at some point here soon. They'll get it figured out. You think. I'm not too overly worried about these contract situations. I think they'll get sorted out. I mean, first of all, they were stupid by giving Dak Prescott what they gave him a few years ago, but that was that's in the past. Um, you can't change. I think that they'll get this together, um, and I think we'll see a similar season as last year. I mean, I think that what what do they got schedule wise? I mean, like you said, the they, play, North. North. they play the AFC North with, or North, which that's going to be tough, but like. I mean, like you said, they have the Commanders and the Giants in their division. Their first, That's four easy wins right there. The first half of their schedule is brutal. But then you get to the second half and you have a lot, a lot of winnable games. Yeah, yeah. like, and, and and this is not a bad team. No, like this is a, a good, this is a good football team. It's it not, should be Super Bowl contenders with the talent they have on that team. Well, but they definitely are not Super Bowl contenders. So no, I, not, not they the they are a good football team. But I think I think we'll see a similar arc as we saw last year. I think that they're going to have a good regular season. I don't think they're going to shaft people by 90 like they did last year because that was a historical thing that I witnessed. But I think that we'll see a similar year where they'll be good in the regular season and then come playoff time, they'll just absolutely take a dump. I think that's probably what we're going to see. It's that's the Cowboys the, story. That's what, we've, what, seen, happens, that's what we've, we've seen since 95. Yeah. So, I mean, but I – yeah, I'm not quite as low on them as, as – uh, you are. I, I think this is still a very good football team, and I don't trust the Eagles that much anymore after whatever the heck happened last year. I still have the Eagles being a good football team this year, too. It's just actually that <laughs> was why. Let's talk about the Eagles. Yeah. How about you start with the Eagles? Yeah, you start okay, with, yeah, I'll start with the, with the Eagles. I have the Eagles right below. I, by the way, let me. I have the Cowboys being the four seed. And I have the Eagles right below at five. Okay. And I have the Eagles at ten and seven. So okay. one game, okay. one game behind the Cowboys yeah, in the division. Yeah. But the thing that was eye popping to me that I didn't realize until I just kind of glanced at my phone again while you guys were talking, I have the Eagles going five and one in the division. <laughs> and they're not winning the division. I had, I had the Cowboys at five and one in winning in the division. I have win. I have the Cowboys at three and three in division play. I think I have the Eagles at five and one. one. <laughs> I think this I think the Cowboys like eleven and six going five and one within the division is a little more realistic. They were the top seed, so you're yeah. gonna get those top seeded matchups. Um Eagles are gonna get a couple of those weaker matchups yeah. as is. So if they're a second place yeah. team. Yeah. Exactly. I think I think the Eagles are going to be. They're still a good team. Um, you know, I really don't think Nick Sirianni is that bad of a coach. I'm not on this fire him train. Uh, yeah. I I'm not even really putting him on the hot seat. To be full on honest with you. Yeah, if they, if I, they I, have, if I, they implode this year, there's going to be serious questions. If, be questions. if they implode, I will question things. But dude has been the head coach for what three years now? Yeah. He's already been to the Super Bowl every year. He's been there. They've been a top tier team. 
Like I'm, I'm not, not on the fire next to the reality. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, you have that turnover in both OC and DC after going to the Super Bowl. There's gonna be some changes that yeah. take place. That it was given. To Shout out Shane Steichen. Yeah, this is yeah. this is this is not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not top three play caller. If you in the NFL. if you are on the fire next year, on your train, like you're crazy because he's a good coach and he legitimately lost every coach around him. Yeah. What do you expect the guy? Yeah. I mean, and their de- and their secondary got worse last year too. Like, what the heck do you expect out of them? And they still win the playoffs. Like, I don't know what you expect out of this guy. So, I mean, I have the Eagles being a good team still, but I do not trust them as much as I did going into last season. Like, last, going into last season, I think I, I think I might have had or no, I had the Niners. I think I had the Eagles in the NFC Championship. Yeah, right? I think we all did. Yeah, I, I like I, I, I had them. Oh wait, yes, I did. I, I had them had and the Niners being by far and away the best team. I, think in the all I thought you meant. I thought you meant <laughs> no, the Super yeah. Bowl, and I'm like, no, no, no. No, I had that. no, I had the Eagles and the Niners on a tier, and then the rest of the NFC way below them. And I don't have that anymore. But I do think the Eagles are still a good and respectable football team. So I have them ten and seven, five and one in the division. Which is kind of wild. <laughs> yeah, five and one in the division and not winning the division is pretty crazy. <laughs> so that's what I noticed. Um, but yeah, I got them as the five seed in the NFC. All right, we're going to reverse yeah, order. Yeah, we'll go reverse yeah. order. All right, we'll just keep going. Um, I have them at eleven and six. Um, I think the Eagles are going to be a lot better than sh- this year than they were last year. Uh, you bring in Saquon Barkley, who is a uh, one of the be- better best running backs in the league. Um, he's a massive step up from Kenny Gainwell and uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Swift. Swift. DeAndre Swift. Um, then you got um, obviously one of the biggest losses for them with Jason Kelsey retired, but uh, you got Cam Jurgens coming in there who um, he's been solid so far. Um, and then on defense, I mean, you brought back CJ Gardner Johnson, brought in Devin White. Um, you're gonna have another year of Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter in that in the um, front. You did lose um, uh, Hassan Reddick. But you still have Darius Slay, uh, drafted Quinn on Mitchell, so I think that and defense, Cooper DeGene. yeah, and Cooper DeGene, yeah. So I think that defense is going to be improved. Um, they got Vic Fangio as the defensive coordinator, who was previously with the Dolphins. We'll see how he does because he wasn't great in Miami, um, but we'll see if he can pick it up. And then they have uh, Kellen Moore as the OC now, with um, obviously up there with Sirianni. So I think but I she think, came from the Chargers, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. He wasn't so, their head coach, but he was their. Oh, team. I know. But. So yeah. I, I think the Eagles are in for a really good season. I think Jalen Hurts is going to bounce back. He he had a pretty solid year last year. He just turned the ball over a little bit more than you would like to see. AJ Brown in the first half of the season was on an unreal pace, um, and I think that offense is going to be more balanced with Saquon and Jalen Hurts um, and uh, AJ Brown. I think that offense is going to be <coughs> prolific, and I think they're going to be a lot better of a team this year than they were. Last year, um, even though they'll finish around, they'll finish with the same record as they did last year, but it'll look a little prettier. Um, so I got them at eleven and six and winning. I am excited to see Saquon though, especially with, uh, I mean, if Kellen Moore's a better offensive line. Offensive yeah. line. Yeah. yeah, well, also, but with Kellen Moore too, if they use him like they use Austin Eckler, then he's going to be a fantasy freaking well, nightmare. Well, yeah. even before that, imagine what it was Zeke during Zeke's decent year. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, I Zeke think, was unreal. Yeah. yeah, I told I was talking Rookie to Zeke is unbelievable. I was talking to Tyler when I mean, we were talking fantasy wise, but I think I told him that I think Saquon might be able to do for the Eagles similar to what McCaffrey did for the Niners. It'll it can be so, close. I think that uh, I do think that's a pretty a pretty big addition yeah. that they got there. So um, I have the Philadelphia Eagles at twelve and five. Damn. Uh, I they will win the NFC East. Um, they are serious Super Bowl contenders this year, in my opinion. Um, the big thing for me is that they address every single weakness of that team in the offseason. Their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator. I don't even know who their defensive coordinator was. They fired him midseason and replaced him with Matt Patricia. <laughs> like, no wonder your defense is going to be terrible. And then they fired their offensive coordinator because of the implosion offensively against terrible teams last year. And they replaced him with Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio. Who were two like two elite coaches? Two like I don't know yeah, about elite, elite coordinators, but they get the job done. Known for having no, good seasons. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. So they Thanks addressed the they addressed team. their two awful coordinators and got ones that will do the job. And then the weakest part of their team last year was their secondary, and they did everything humanly possible to improve their secondary by drafting Coop DeGene, Quinn Mitchell, re-signing C.J. Gardner Johnson. They still have Darius Slay. Their front seven is still going to be elite. 
And Nick Sirianni hasn't done anything to show me that he's a bad head coach. Um, Jalen Hurts was this close to winning a Super Bowl two years ago. The only main thing for he me... He was the best player in the Super Bowl. Yeah, he was Bowl the best player in the Super Bowl two years ago. Um, but the big thing for me is losing Jason Kelsey. Um, I feel like... I don't know about necessarily like last year and the year before, but early, earlier in his career, he was the heartbeat. Of that Eagles team. I also like, think losing Hassan Reddick is a, not an awesome Well, horse. Hassan Reddick was a problem, and he's causing problems with the Jets now, and they replaced him with Bryce Hoff. He's so. a very talented yeah. football yeah. player. He's so. a talented football player. Plus, they have Jalen Carter, and like they got Devin White, which Devin White's not they great. They got Nolan Smith. They got too. Nolan Jaylen, Smith, too. Yeah. Like, Nolan Smith's identical to Hassan Their Hassan front Reddick. seven is going to be just fine, I promise you. Yeah. Um, I have the Eagles as serious Super Bowl contenders. I think they are going to return to their 2022 form. I think they have no reason not to with an easier schedule. Jalen Hurts will have a bounce back year. Um, those are my thoughts on Philadelphia. Uh, I mean, a lot of what you guys have already said. Um, the reason why I gave Nick a fist bump is because I have them going 12-5 and five as well. Um, they're going to be num- my number three. Holy crap. They're my number three. No, I can, I can see it. At twelve and five, yeah, yes, there's good. There's good teams. There in the is NFC. a ton of good teams in the NFC this year. Um, yeah, I have them sitting at twelve and five. Um, a lot of the same reasons you guys have said. It's just they addressed their biggest need of uh, of secondary. When you got two guys that one's projected to go in the top ten, top fifteen, and then another one's projected to go top twenty, and you get them in the second round, you get them, yeah, that. It, and it, at a position, yeah, you need positions to, of need too. It's unbelievable value that they were able to get. Um, but it, Nick, you alluded to it. They, it's an unreal roster. Like, yeah, you lost one of your big leaders in uh, Jason Kelsey, but it seems like the um, Eagles can just read out. Yeah, their offensive they're, they line. They can read out went, offensive yeah, line. their offensive line went from being undisputedly the best in the league. To or still like, like top two to still like top, top five. Three, yeah, top, I would say top four, top five. Yeah, for sure. So I mean that that's kind of the points I'll make. I have so I have both Cowboys and Eagles making it in. I think yeah, I think we all do. Yeah. yeah. Now we get to the the bottom feeders. <laughs> this I don't got much to say about it. I I, 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 I'm ex- I will say this. Do you want to talk about the team that we're not has more excitement? That excitement? has more excitement, or would you rather get the one out of the way? I don't really care. I'm going to bring up the team with excitement and it's the Commanders. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this team. I am too. Yeah. Um, if Jaden Daniels can prove to be the guy that he can be he can be, and what he showed at LSU, whew, that's going to be unreal. Maybe and next year. And the fact, it, yeah, I have him going 6-11. and 11. I also have him going 6-11. So it's, it's, it's like... <laughs> It's that first year experience. Got to get the. I don't like. I, I don't love this team. I just, no, are they third in the division for you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Third around the board. I, I think this I have is them fourth. Oh yeah. I have, yeah, I have them four and thirteen. Oh. Okay. I just outside of Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin, I don't know what they don't have anything. They have a wash. That's insane. They have a wash. Austin Eckler, a terrible O line and a terrible defense, and a not and a not great. Don't they have a really good D line? No, they traded Chase Young away. They don't have a deal. Chase Young was not that insane they, they anyway. Allen they have Jonathan Allen. Allen. Yeah. He's one player. And who else Drew, did you say? Yeah. That's the, one the, that's one unit of their team. Defensive tackle. This is, I'm also, this is not a four win team. A four I'm oh, also wow. not as high on Jaden Daniels as the rest of you guys. Okay, well I am high. Did you see that? Ooh, wow. What? Did you see that? No, the what Falcons just traded for Matthew Judon. Oh that's that's, 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 shoot. Yeah. that's yeah. big. That's that's a that's yeah. impactful. Breaking, breaking yeah. news live. Yeah. I might have to change a pick here I got. But no, anyways. Uh, uh, that's a big. That's yeah, a big that, move. That's an impactful yeah. move. Holy cow. For sure. <clears throat> um, I heard that they were thinking about doing that. Or that they were shopping. Him. I don't think this, this commander's team, this that is it's, not this is not a not, four win It's team. not good. Don't get me wrong. It's not good. But they made strides, in my opinion, to at least get above that four wins threshold. Push because I there was a point when I was doing these I had them almost at a seven eight I was like no, but, I can't, back, but I can't do that I can't do that um, I'm excited to see what Jaden Daniels can do um, and especially with Terry McLaurin Terry McLaurin actually getting a quarterback that's halfway capable of doing something um, in theory yeah. but um, there's a lot of question marks still but it's <clears> exciting <throat> to see what could be. I'm gonna and I think it's gonna be a six and eleven. I'm gonna cut Nick and piggyback off you because we agree. I also have him at six and eleven, and this is not a four-win team. 
this is not there's no way this is a four win team um i'll get to a four win team mm, eh, not as soon as i thought i have a two win team by the way so yeah this I, is a, yeah. this is not a four win team uh i think that this is like i just said i don't love this team I think it's a strangely assembled team. I kind of feel the yeah, same way I feel. Strangely, strangely assembled. I feel, a, I, I, put I feel the same way about the Commanders as I do the Titans. It is a very just oddly weird, assembled. Yeah, it's it's a just weird a weird team. group of football players. Like Austin Eckler, who I don't. Who's past his prime. And he's, he's not washed. even number one. I don't even think he's. As, he's not their number one. He's yeah, I know. Obviously, he's Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson. Yeah. And Brian, Brian, Brian Robinson's, Robinson's pretty underrated. underrated. Brian, I think both of those guys are underrated. Brian Robinson's good, and I think Austin Eckler is a serviceable back. He still. cannot run the football. I don't think that's true. He's a receiving back. That's an offense fine. that doesn't utilize receiving backs. I don't know why the commanders acquired him in the first I don't know place. either, but I don't think he I think he is still a serviceable football player. I think, so I think, I think and you're also good. forgetting about Jahan Dotson. Jahan Dotson is good. I, he, nah, Jahan Dotson is a talented receiver. And I, Jahan Dotson's not moving the needle for me. He's going to be a good two with Terry McLaurin. The, and then their number three is McCaffrey. Well, Luke McCaffrey, yeah. which that, that good. One there's, there's potential there. Yeah. He's I, got the last name. I like Jahan Dotson. I was targeting Jahan yeah, Dotson in fantasy. I, I think Jahan Dotson will be a solid football player because I think that Jane Daniels, I am very high on Jane Daniels. I think Jane Daniels is going to be a really good quarterback in the NFL. He's already been playing extremely well in camp. He's showed very, he's showed very good signs in camp. He, I saw, I saw one clip of him from the preseason games. I mean, no one can watch these because they aren't really televised. No. But the clip that I saw that kind of just went viral on the internet, a perfectly placed deep ball fade go, fade route. It was an you know who pass. else did that? Zach Wilson during his pro. Day. Why are you comparing him to Zach Wilson? Because I'm not, I'm not taking one play or what's happening in training camp. To determine whether what a player is going to do at an NFL level, I think what happens in training camp and in the preseason game is important. I, I, I'm, I don't. I think that's important, especially for a rookie. I think it's important. It's, it's important. Training it's camp it's practice is important. Not, it's not in game it, it, NFL it football. It's he not. did it in a game. It's not. They're not playing your best rosters. It's not in game NFL football. That is it's a not. game for a rookie. That's a game. Yeah. Is that, you know is that is Zach Wilson's example? Like that whole thing? Oh, he did that in pro day. Yeah, that's a gay example because pro day doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I joke. That's zero. Off. I, yeah. There's no one out there. It's out on air. I don't know. I. Don't, I'm, I what um Jane Daniels, I liked Jane Daniels and I liked Jane Daniels at LSU. I thought he was nasty in college, very talented quarterback. He dude dude accounted for over sixty touchdowns. Yeah, look at the offense he was around. Look at the offensive coordinators, look at the score. He had a top five wide receiver that he could throw to. And a top and, twenty and a top twenty wide receiver in this year's draft. I, I, I He's a very he's talented saying. quarterback. He also doesn't have much more room to grow. He's twenty three. 23 is not that old. For an NFL quarterback. In Joe Burrow came into the NFL at 23. Joe Burrow is a completely different. I do an not. Outlier. If you're talking about. See, you are hating on these quarterbacks too much. Because you think the same thing about Bo Nix because he's 24. Now, 20, 24 is, is getting up there. Bo Nix is. A, 23 wow. is not that old. He is a, Quarterbacks play until they're 40 now. 23 is not very old. He is a the very talented. a lot so you can yeah. get those two. Get Jay Jay and Daniels is a very very talented football player. I'm very excited to watch. I'm I'm very excited to watch him. I think he's going to be a good quarterback. All he's saying is that the team. I know what he's saying, but and you agree with me. I do. I'm just trying to. I know what he's saying. I know what he's saying. It is a strangely assembled team, but it's not like this is a team of myth. Total misfits. They got good players on both sides of the ball. I'll say this about the team. I think it's a team that's. They brought in a bunch of old pieces. A couple of guys that come to mind are Bobby Wagner. For this one. this they're team also this won. team, they're, but they're bringing in these guys to develop for next year, and that's why I think all of us are trying to they bring point, in, point out with the low records is they bring in. Brick. It's not a team that's built for this year. No, it's not. It's not at all. Bri- I don't have them built for this year. I have no, a I six know. and eleven. I'm, but I'm just yeah, I have like four and thirteen. Why is this like <laughs> such a big deal? <laughs> no, seriously, a, fo- a four win team is a lot different than a six win team. No. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. Right. Four wins and six wins is it's a different. It's different. Uh-huh. Like I think. So I think that this is a, like they got good pieces. They're veteran pieces. They're gonna train the younger guys. I think Jane Daniels is gonna be a good quarterback. They're not gonna be good this year, no. But I think that next year, 
There's potential. Yeah, we'll talk about him next year when this next year comes around. This is a strangely assembled team. But I like Jane Daniels a lot. I'm defending Jane Daniels. I'm on the Jane Daniels train, but I do have him. It's gonna there's be just, a, it's gonna be a slow year for him. It's gonna be a rough year for him. There's, there's but just, it's not gonna be that rough. That's a different beast. Four wins is a different beast. Very different beast. Evan. All right. Uh, I also have the six and twelve. Um, I I think Jane Daniels is going to be have a really good season. I I like him as well. I like him with the Kings Grace offense. Um, that too. I've you seen that too. I've seen a lot of good things from him from camp. Um, and I think, um, I mean this team won four games with Sam Howell as their quarterback. So I think Jane Daniels can get them to six. I don't think that's Jane Daniels is way better than Sam Howell. Um, Brian Robinson, I still think is a good back. And you have Austin Eckler who is out of his prime, but might be able to do a little bit. Um, Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, I, I like a lot as well because um, in Cliff Kingsbury's offenses, um, he's had top five, or they've been in the top 15 in pass attempts, um, and he, he really likes to throw the ball around, and I think he's going to kind of do that with uh, Jay Daniels, who kind of play style-wise plays a little bit how Tyler Murray does, um, scrambling, scrambling running quarterback with a good arm. Um, the O line is is bad. That that is a thing. The O line is terrible. They let like fifty something stacks last year. So part of that was on Sam Howell yes. for holding so the ball. Too Daniels yeah. Which that that is a concern because trust me, as Bengals fans, we saw that with yeah. Burrow. So that is a concern. He'll probably so that be, needs to be fixed, preferably a lot faster than how the Bengals fix it. Yeah. So they'll probably be running before Jane line. Daniels is in. Um, and then the defense, um, they still have Deron Payne. They have Jonathan <laughs> Allen who are. Two very good defensive tackles. They brought in Frankie Lubu, who I really like, um, and linebacker um, Bobby Wagner is not who he used to be, but he's still a solid player. Um, the secondary is not great. You have Emmanuel Forbes, who um, was their first round pick just a year ago. He's struggled a lot in training camp. Jeremy Chin, who I think is a solid safety. Uh, ben St. Juice, who I think is a solid corner. And uh, Mike Sanders, still, who I think is going to be a good corner for them as well. Um, but that, that defense is the worst part of their team mm-hmm. by far. Um, and I, I'm firm style. Yes. And I'm with, I'm with you guys. I think, I think this year will be kind of a year just to, you know, just play it out. And then I think next year they'll, they'll be better. But, um, six and 11, I, they're not sniffing the playoffs, but they're not, <laughs> they're going to be better than they were this past year. Yeah. Uh, I'll briefly, Say my no, thoughts no, no, on the no. Commanders and then transition into How did I do that? the Giants. Uh, again, I have the Commanders at 4-13. and 13. I'm not as high on Jaden Daniels as I think the rest of you are, but I put in my notes, Daniels shows flashes. Like, I think he's going to have games this season where he shows that he could be a really good NFL quarterback. And as a rookie, I mean, as a rookie in the situation that he's in with a god-awful line, not an awesome defense, aging veterans who are there to bridge young guys – like flashes is enough that you need to continue. Well, yeah, to continue the rebuild process. Mm-hmm. But for this season, like I just uh, Austin Eckler way past his prime. Bobby Wagner hasn't been good since COVID. Um, Emmanuel Forbes is burnt toast. Uh, the only decent part of their defense is their defensive line, and that's two whole players. The rest of their defense, defense is a defensive line is out. very important position on the defense. Well, yeah, I understand. Well, no, and by defensive line, I mean defensive tackle. Their defensive ends are non-existent. They don't have. But see, the thing is, though, they that both, yeah, at, they si- both at six away. and eleven, they're going to have a top ten-ish pick. It, it'll be like seven or eight, probably. And they can get a perfectly fine player. Yeah, that's, well, that's why they the have line, or the D this, line or the defense. Like this I, class upcoming is going to be a lot better defense. Yes, I, <laughs> sure. I am. I like where this team's at. Like this year is going to be one of those years where it's like, let's just get through it healthy. Yeah, you know, I also situation. also here's the thing. Here. You, you yeah, think exactly. Like, Dan, let, let, let's use these veterans who are washed and wasted. Yeah, they'll provide good mentors to teach these younger guys. <laughs> I mean, Emmanuel Forbes isn't even a better veteran. <laughs> he's, 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 he's just <laughs> sucked <laughs> last year. <laughs> they think were Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, <laughs> that was unbelievable. Um, Still blows but even so, like Dan Quinn, I don't under I don't think Dan Quinn's a good head coach. I think the only reason he had success in Atlanta is because he literally had Kyle Shanahan yeah. as his offensive coordinator. Yeah, really and then when he lost Kyle Shanahan, <laughs> he kept getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, I don't love him as a head coach, but I mean, I think that overall the team's still in a solid spot. Cliff Kingsbury, I know it's different, but as a head coordinator coach, and coach is different. No, I'm getting to that. Very different. No, story. I'm getting to that. Co- coordinator and coach is different, right? Cliff Kingsbury couldn't succeed with Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback in college. He did. No, he did not. Patrick Mahomes threw no, for did. 700 yards in one game. I'm, 
It's one game against a non non-existent defense. <laughs> Seven hundred yards. I don't care. You Baker, can't throw Baker Mayfield on that defense. Baker Mayfield. I'm not talking about myself. Baker Mayfield threw for six hundred in the same game. And that's also insane. No that defense Baker Mayfield was playing. Quarterback too. Literally no defense was playing. I have not. I don't understand where this. <laughs> where where are we going? I don't understand where this Cliff Kingsbury, Kingsbury comes from. is a good offensive coach. He has it, but I did not expect it. He also, we, you That's also. That's what I'm saying. He went clear down the rabbit hole. You mm-hmm. also are forgetting about the one year that he had. Well, it was only one off. Look, he, he, he had a couple average years, but one year in Arizona where they won like 11 consecutive yeah, games. Yeah, they started the year out 8-0 and then completely fell apart But they're in off 2021. They, well, one year they went 11-6. That was, that was, the, the that, was that year. Yeah. Yeah, like their offense was like serviceable. They started out eight and zero, and then lost to Carson Wentz at home and got blown out by the Rams in the playoffs. The Rams won the Super Bowl that year. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> that was a historically I'm super not, team. I don't, I don't get that the. We should have been. Yeah, I don't get the Cleef. I don't <laughs> of get. Course he- I don't get the Cliff Kingsbury hype. I don't think Dan Quinn's a great head coach. I don't like the roster outside of the D tackles, Jay Daniels and Terry McLaurin. Um, this year, I, I just I don't see it. Cliff so, Kingsbury as a head coach, not awesome. Terrible. Cliff Kingsbury as an all OC, it's a different. Story. We'll see. Right. Different. We'll see this year. We're moving on. Moving on to the Giants now. <laughs> One sec. The um, Patriots <laughs> traded a third round pick in twenty twenty five for. Uh, that's a steal. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Falcons traded. That's, that's a steal. For Matt Judon. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great for the Falcons. Um, all right. The New York Football Giants. Let's keep this quick because. There's not much. There's only like I'll, a couple pieces I'll start on this team. Off. I have them going three and fourteen. Yep, me too. Um, I think they are the worst team in the NFL, probably. Um, I don't know about that. Yes, they are. They're, they're pretty. They're terrible. They're, they're terrible. They're terrible. But they're fine. They're <laughs> pretty. Who the heck is worse? They're. Uh, we'll they're, get to them. They're. Yeah. I, I. I think you can. Um, we will not get to them. I think you can put them in as a top three pick right now. Um. Daniel Jones sucks. Devin Singletary, I think, I think's decent. Um, I like Malik Neighbors a lot. I think he's going to do really well if Daniel Jones can get in the football. Um, Wanda Robinson, I think, is a little sleeper guy. Um, the offensive line guy. is good on the left side, but the right side's trash. Um, they got Brian. Their Yosemite? defensive line is going to be good. Their defensive yeah. line is going to be good. Brian Burns, Kevon Thibodeau, yeah. Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence. Dexter yeah. Lawrence. So they so they have, Dexter. They're, yeah. Their defensive line is good. Their secondary sucks. Um, and Linebackers yeah. aren't anything that... Hey, don't disrespect Bobby O'Karake. Colts legend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Other than that, they have no one. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody expects the Giants to do really no. anything this year. No. Um, this will be the final year. They can get out of Daniel Jones' contract after this year, and I think they will do that. Yeah. Um, and I think they'll be drafting a quarterback this in this um, upcoming okay. draft and go in a complete rebuild. Um, so yes, I have them going three and fourteen, being not very good at all. You have them at three and fourteen. What do you have them at? Uh, I have the Giants at two and fifteen. Okay. <laughs> I think that this is a okay. Well, abs- right ballpark. I think this is a dog water, garbage, unbearable wasteland of a football joke of a football team. <laughs> Are they the worst team in the NFL for you? Yes. Okay. This is, Fair enough. This is, not the, for worst, this is the worst. No, they're team not for me. They are not for me. This team yeah. is an embarrassment of the game. And so are their throwback uniforms. This team is bad. This is yeah. horrendous. Okay, yes. But the I worst, can get behind that, too. The worst quarterback in the NFL. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> this team is bad. Like, like not good. Hot okay. trash. Yeah. Hot. Well, I, according to um, TikTok, Daniel Jones and Justin Herbert are right like there. right there. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, according That's to our insane. comment section. I'm not um, sure what y'all are talking about with that. That's a. Hey, we good. appreciate the support <laughs> on the videos, but no. Um, I I I am the highest on the Giants. I have them. At, Why? I have them at five and twelve. Why? <laughs> well, are you kidding? That's, you have them better than the Commanders. Listen, listen. Zach. That's wild. Zach. That's insane. Zach. What do you have to say about that? I'm gonna say. Who cares? They're That's both five and twelve. Wild. They're terrible. You think the Giants are better? No, no, no. Than listen, Anders? I think no. the Giants have more NFL ready players currently, but the Commanders have a way better future than the Giants do. Like after no, after this year, Daniel Jones is gone. They're gonna go in a complete rebuild. But I think I mean their defensive line is nasty. Their defensive line is gonna single handedly win them like two or three games. Yeah, that's the only good part of their team. 
Um, but other than that, the Giants are terrible. They're going to go, I have them at 5-12. and 12. In my notes, I have Daniel Jones is not the guy. The sooner they realize that, the better. That is an egregiously generous <laughs> Literally doesn't matter at all. I, lo- I love how he looks over at me. He's like, what do you have what to say? What do you have to say about that? Well, because you're trying to, it's like, what? Where do you no. have them? I have them 4-13, and 13, worse than... Yeah, it's all worse than the division. three games of each other. They're terrible. Who I cares? I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I have them four and thirteen. Same <laughs> reasons. I, I'm excited because they got a lot of. They got talent. They got dogs on that. They got team. dogs on that team, but when you don't have a quarterback or an offensive or line. an offensive line or, right or a secondary, <clears throat> anything, it, it it hinders the other great aspects. Like the the Commanders are going in the right direction, right? But. The Giants just, I think, have a better roster, slightly. They have more currently names. today. Yeah, they have more names. To go I would even disagree with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Next, Next division. NFC West. We just spent we just spent thirty minutes <laughs> on the stinking NFC East. Holy cow! That's one of the more exciting. It is, but all right. I would... yeah. all right. Yeah. NFC West. Start off with the Arizona Cardinals. Let me, let me start with this. Right, okay. I have the Cardinals at 5 and 12. Oh, they're going to check 13. No, no, no. no. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I have the Cardinals at 5 leave. and 12. I have leave leave this podcast. I Stop could, talking. I could leave. genuinely see them winning 10 games and making the playoffs. I, 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 like, I'm being so swing. serious. That's a big swing. It is a big swing. I, I, I like, people are talking what about, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> people, Continue. people talk about, like, sleeper teams that could potentially make the playoffs and win a game. I don't think people are talking about the Cardinals enough. Like they've got they've got they just drafted Mars. Kyler Murray's fully healthy. They got Trey McBride. They got James Conner. Their O line is improving. So let me ask you why you have them at five wins. They don't have a defense. At all. Uh, that's, like their defense is may may be worse than the commanders is. They don't have a good they don't have anything defensively. They have Buddha Baker who actively wants out of that team. And other than that, who's their next best defensive player? Zayvon Collins? Isaiah Simmons isn't even on the team anymore. Like, who do they have? They don't have anyone defensively. Their defense is terrible. Sean Murphy, Bunting, like, that's not It's not, that's not good. That's not good. They don't have any. Yeah. So, here's, like, this if their offense is, like, way better than I think a lot of people are expecting it to be, they their offense could carry them to, like, nine or ten wins. But I like I like if Kyler Murray was a top five quarterback in the league, I could see that. But I, Kyler Murray's not like I know you're high on Kyler Murray. That's probably why you have. I'm not as high on him as, as even you guys. Yeah, are. I uh, just don't, I, I don't <laughs> think they're that bad of a team. Yeah. I think yeah, their just... their offense is re- their offense has the potential to be really good. Their defense is terrible. Um, so I I have them at five and twelve, but I, I could very easily see them shocking a lot of people and like making the playoffs this I'll, season. I'll jump in next. Um, I have them at eight and nine, um, and there was times when I was going through this where I was, there were games that I considered them to win, and I had them at that ten win threshold. But after you do some careful thinking, you do some realization. It's like, do I think it's actually possible? I, I just don't see them being a playoff team yet. Yeah. For that exact reason, on the defensive side of the ball, they can't. They, it, there's really nothing there. Um, I love the offense and what they've done. They've last year they identified big the biggest weakness, which was offensive line. And then you go out this year, Kyler Murray, who I'm extremely high on. I I think I'm happy he's healthy. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm very happy he's healthy, and I think he could take that big step back in to even be cons- start to be even more considered in that top ten, fifteen ish range. Yeah, I would say that. Um, and then going out and getting a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. is game-changing. And we saw what could happen when Kyler had D-Hop. Yeah. Now you get Marv, who's younger and has, has, the potential, has to be potential to be better. Yeah. So I have him 8-9, and nine, missing the playoffs, the worst team in this division. But I, it, I mean, this yeah. division is solid. They're obviously the worst team in the division for yeah. me, too, at 5-12. I have them at nine and eight, missing the playoffs. Um, I think Kyler Murray is going to return to Kyler Murray form this season. Um, I think Marv is going to be a big part of that because I mean, we've talked about him a lot. He's the best wide receiver prospect we've seen in a very long time. Um, 
And James Conner, who I think went healthy last year, was a very good back. You brought in Trey Benson, who I really like as a, as a secondary back to him as well. Uh, Trey McBride had a breakout season. I think he's going to be one of the best tight ends in the league. Um, that offensive line, like Nick said, is improving with Paris Johnson. Um, and then on defense, that's the biggest weakness of their team. Um, their pass rush is not great. Um, their secondary is okay, but that's going to be the reason why they um, why they fail is because of that defense. But I think that offense is going to be very good. I think, like Joel said, last time we saw Kyler with a true one receiver, they went 11-6, and six and they had, both had very good seasons. And I think um, Marv is going to do that. I think he's going to elevate that team a lot. And I, I like the weapons they have with Connor and McBride, and I think, I think they're going to – they're going to be nine and eight, which is a, a drastic improvement from last year, but they're still missing the playoffs. Zach, I have them also at nine and eight, missing the playoffs. Um, I pretty much agree with you for the most part. Um, I'm not quite as high on Kyler Murray as you are, but I think that this is a good offense. Uh, Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison are going to have a pretty good connection, I would think. Trey McBride, as you said, I pretty much agree with everything you said. I mean, obviously they don't have a defense, but this is once again definitely not a five-win team. This is going to be yeah. I might so I might be a little like in I, like you a, are a couple games low, on them. low yeah. On them. But I like I can I can see them making the, I can genuinely see this team making the playoffs. This I game. almost had them in the playoffs. Yeah, I can I, I can genuinely see them making because the if playoffs. they go up against a team that has like a stellar defense that's able to hold that yeah. that offense in check uh, with a not, rookie receiver with, and a. Kyler Murray's not like a, like he's a game changer, but he's not like an upper like an elite upper echelon quarterback that can overcome those kind of I, issues. I get that. It, but the, <clears throat> those games where that happens, the defense isn't going to be able to hold. No. So I I can understand where you're coming from there too. So, uh, yep. So I'll, just, I'll, I'll just go here. Um, I have the Cardinals not being the worst team in the division. Uh, I think that goes to the Seahawks. I have Absolutely. them at eight and nine, though it's one game difference. I don't like. I don't love the Seahawks' position here. I just until they get a quarterback in there that's not Geno Smith. I I just I don't love it. I mean, I I, I think they got um Tyreek um they got Tyreek or Terry Ter- 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 Yeah, but he plays defense. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Like, yeah. I I I, I think I think they have a pretty solid defense. Like, he's obviously one of the best quarters in the league. I would say. But and then oh, offensively, man. receiver, he's really good. Yeah, he, I wouldn't call him one of the best corners in the league, but he's good. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's, he's an elite a, level. Um, he's an elite he's corner. corner prospect, like corner prospect. Did not. He expect, did not. Yeah, did, did not, not have that good of a year last year. No, he just he, came out of the blue. It, it, I think he's a pretty rookie good season. Was his rookie, yeah, his rookie back. year was elite, but last year he was like, he he took a step back. I think he's pretty good. He is good. He's good. And then you've got you know obviously Metcalf. Who has yet to, in my opinion, be what I think he should be? I, I I just think with his athletic talent and his size, he should be the best receiver in the NFL. Should be one of the best. I mean, he he should, he should just, easily be a top he, ten receiver. He, he should egregiously dominate, which he doesn't. Um, but JSN, I like JSN's nasty. Um, and then obviously K nine in the backfield is a really really good back as well. So got Tyler Lockett. Yeah, yeah, they got Tyler Lockett too. He's a seasoned vet who's still parentally underrated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my issue that holds them back is the quarterback. Geno Smith is okay, but he is not going to be the quarterback of this future. This is a this is a young team. Yeah. Let's get a quarterback in here and let's get this team. Sam Howell might get a shot. I was going to say I was Sam Howell to is see what not they do with Sam Howell. Yeah, we'll see what they do with Sam Howell. But they trade they trade for him for a reason. Like they didn't just trade for him for nothing. I don't think it should be him. I think it should be someone else. I I agree. But, I agree with um, that. But at the same time, they could have something else. Up yeah. Their I don't agree with any of that. Okay. But um, I'm just saying. I think I think that the Seahawks will end up being the worst team in the division this year, only by a game though. This is overall pretty competitive. That is very. Competitive it's a very competitive division. division. But I, I just I just don't love the Seahawks quarterback position. No. Um. I also have them at eight and nine. Um, I think they're going to be solid. Um, Geno Smith is a bridge quarterback. Um, but they don't have anyone to bridge him to is the issue. Yes. They're working on it. It's a work in progress. They have a good, yeah, have a good running back duo of uh, Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. I like their running backs. Um, DK Metcalf, I think he's going to have a good year this year um, with under new offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb, who came from the Washington Huskies, who threw the ball around a lot last year with Michael Penix. Um, and um, 
Uh, DK's been a, a good red zone target in the last couple of years. He has a 12.1% touchdown rate, which is well above league average. Um, and I think in that offense with that coordinator, um, I mean, you got Mike McDonald now from, who's coming over from the Ravens. Um, so I think he's ushering a new era. Obviously, P. Carroll left. But, I mean, that the, the receivers, like, like we've mentioned, uh, DK, Lockett, JSN, I think that's a really good um, – Good three, good trio right there. No offense, not too shabby as a tight end. The offensive line is young, but they're getting better. Um, I like Charles Cross, Connor Williams, Abraham Lucas. Um, the defense is the defense of line isn't great. Um, their secondary is not bad with um, Devin Witherspoon That's very easy. and um, Re- Tyreek Woolen. Um, their their secondary is probably the strongest part of that defense, but their um, their D line is young. Um, so that's going to be something that I think is going to hold him back a little bit. But um, I think with the new era, I think Mike McDonald is obviously he was the defensive coordinator for the um, Ravens last year. They had the, one of the best defenses in the league. Um, I think he's going to help that defense get better. I think um, I think Ryan Grubb's going to help evolve that offense as well to utilize the weapons that they have a little bit better than Pete Carroll's offense did. But I do agree with Weaver. I think they need to move on from Geno Smith. Here in the near future, which I think they can get out of his contract, also this at the end of this year. So um, I have them going eight and nine, missing the playoffs, finishing last. Right. I'm going to keep this uh, short and sweet. Uh, I have them nine and eight, missing the playoffs. I like Mike McDonald as their head coaching hire. I think that was one of the better ones in the off season. Other than that, I agree with everything you guys said. Good. I have them ten and seven, missing the playoffs. Dang. They were the first team to miss for me. Um, Not the first team to miss for me. There's one other one. Um, right it, it was close between the other one. Uh, I think I, I had them. I think I had that this team at ten, uh, Seahawks ten seven. The other one nine and eight. But um, I mean, you guys were. I mean, there's not much else to say. You got you two covered it extremely well. Um, there's just it's so competitive yeah. in this division. It's a very good. It's division. so hard to singles. so hard to compete in that one when you have the elite level at the top. Yeah. Um, Speaking of the elite level, Leonard uh, Williams, by the way, no. is a big piece on that defensive line. I so I would say I would that helps a lot of. Put, they got they got some young guys that need develop. But Boye Mafe. Mafe is a good could be a good move too. Boye. Um, but yeah, ten and seven, first team out of playoffs. Are you talking about the Rams or the Rams? Or the, Rams. The, Rams. 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 Right. <laughs> house. Earning my seventh spot. No, no, no. Rams. I want to talk about the Rams. Whose house? Your house. That's not the answer. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is? No. It's Rams house. That's like the thing. Isn't that the thing? Yeah. I'm not a Rams fan. I didn't know Rams fans existed. I like the Rams. No, that's Chargers fans. (laughs) I mean... I like both of those teams, but I I, I like the Rams. I'll just... just, No, I'll just say that I... go for it. I'll just say... This and I'll let you do the talking. Do I it. honestly don't have that much to say. Just like go for it. I have the Rams being my last team in at the seven seed at ten and seven. I also have that happening ten and seven as a seven seed. I have them at <laughs> ten and seven, but as the six seed. Oh, okay. That's what I have. Yeah. So I, we're, we all have them in. Yeah, I the am seed. a huge fan of the Rams. I like I'm a fan the Rams of their offense. Lot. Their defense yeah. without Aaron Donald is probably not going to be good this year. Their defense needs some tooling. Yeah. But, tooling. man, their offense, it's dude, real, I, 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 I like this offense a lot. Yeah. I think Cooper Cup, I mean, if he's healthy, he's still a top 10 wideout. I think people kind of forget about him just because he wasn't quite as healthy last year. But even the games when he played, I mean, he was he was nuts in the games he played. I, I like Cooper Cup a lot. They pulled Puka and Kyra Williams out Puka, of nowhere. Exa- both of those guys – I'm not as high on Kyron Williams as some people might think, and I might be crazy for that, but I don't think I am because we've discussed this before, yeah. how the Rams cycle running backs on like a two-year basis. Um, but Blake Corum, though. Cam Akers. Cam Akers is, is yeah. an example of that. Yeah. Still a free agent. But um, I don't know how. That's kind of very sad. But, think, you know, but well, and that's why I'm not quite as high on Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams is a great back. I, yeah. think, I think he'll probably have another good year. I just... He, he, Kyron Williams is not going to have the year he had last year, though. Are is my you kidding me? It's Ronnie Rivers' season. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but they got... I, <laughs> okay, I was excited. I like Blake Corum a lot. 
Um, I'm a fan of that pick. I think Blake Corum might have a sneaky season. Um, Matthew Stafford is still in the top ten, I would say, or right peaking in it. We've talked about before. I was very impressed with him last year. This yeah, Ma- Matthew. I thought last year was the best year of his career. Yeah, Matthew Stafford had a heck of a year last year, and I'm going to be full on honest with you. The Rams should have beat the Lions last year. They had a very—I don't know about should have. They had a very good chance. chance. The Rams should have walked out of Detroit with that win last year in the playoffs. Like I'm not hating on the Lions or anything. The Lions were a great team last year. The Rams should have won that game. So I—I'm a huge fan of the Rams. Uh, I really, really like this team. I mean, obviously, I think that they're going to have to turn a page here soon with like offense. They're going to have to get a little bit younger. With, I mean, Stafford and Cup, and th- th- they'll have to bring in some new guys. And obviously, I don't really think Stetson Bennett's going to be the guy at quarterback. No. So they're going to have. They never know. They got Jimmy G. Famous, famous, responsible driver, <laughs> Stetson Bennett. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think I think they're going to have to turn a page and bring in like a, a, a whole new. They have half of a new era, <laughs> but they're going to have to bring like the whole new era in. And then defensively, they're going to need some tooling. But um, I think this is still a good football team. I mean, and as long as they have Sean McVay, I think they're going to be in a position to be competitive, if not better than competitive. Especially because he's Sean an offensive Mc- head coach. Sean McVay might be my favorite head coach in the NFL. I love Sean McVay. I think he is a great guy, and I think he's an awesome coach. I am a huge fan of Sean McVay. So I like this Rams team. Um, I think they're in a pretty solid spot. They're not going to light the world on fire because their defense needs some tooling. But you I think can't this, replace a guy like Aaron Donald. Well, Aaron Donald's one of he's the best players. He's one he's of the best possible. defensive players of all time. Yeah. So you really can't, but they, they need to get better on yes. defense. But no, I, I like this Rams team a lot. So I, I'm a big fan of them. I got them in at the seven seed. Um, just, like I said, I think they're going to have to bring in some new guys in place for Cup and Stafford, but I don't think it's going to be this year. I think they still got some years in them. I just checked online and looked at their depth chart just to you know have it open. Six of their 11 on offense are questionable or out. Well, they got that's time nice. to fix it. That's nice. I'm Actually, banking on them being healthy. Yeah. Yes. But, no. ba- these predictions are banking on the players Health. being healthy. Yeah. 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 I do like Blake Corum, though. I, I, I think I, I Blake Corum. I, I, I hate Blake Corum. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, Blake Corum's good. But I just, Michigan's best player. It's just my thing. Year. You know, he was Blake Corum was really good at Michigan. I think he, I think he'll be a solid NFL back, but it's just my thing of how the Rams use backs. I mean, Kyron Williams should be their bell cow. Good chance he won't be because that's how they use that. That's just how the Rams use running backs. I don't know why, but that's how it is. So yeah. I don't think any of us have much else different to say about the Rams. Nope. I offense, offense will everything. be good. Defense is young and will be their worst spot, but that passing offense should be really good. It'll carry their defense. And their defense still won't be as bad as like the Cardinals. Or they have the a dark horse to win defensive rookie of the year, too. And Jared Burst. Jared Burst. Yeah. 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 yeah, in my notes, I have the offense outperforms the defense and carries them back to the playoffs. 10-7, and seven, they're my sixth seed. The exact same spot as they were last year. All right, San Francisco 49ers. I don't really know if there's that much to say. I don't think there's a whole lot to say. They, 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 what did they lose? Not true. The only, the only thing I want to talk thing about is the Brandon Ayuk situation. Brandon Ayuk is a big wild card, but I still think without him, with they're, the, still, they're, they're yeah. still unreal. They drafted Ricky Pearsall kind of yeah. in preparation for that. I think. Yeah. I have them as my one seed still. Yeah, I, they're my one I seed actually seed. have the Niners as my two seed. I have them as my two. I have them thirteen and four. I have them twelve and five. I have them twelve. I think um, 13 and 4 as my one seed. I think they have the, the best roster in the NFL still. Yeah, yeah they From still do. Door. I just. I, are they really going to repeat this again? Like I, mean, I, I don't I, see I, a reason why they wouldn't. Yeah. I just think it's crazy. I mean, they've done like, this third year now. They've done that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but they, they, that's they, what happens when you have keep, a team they, like they, they do. They keep not winning the Super Bowl, though. Yeah, yeah they can't get it done. I, their, their Super Bowl window is closing. I really think They've got is. another. Well, they're going to have to play pay Rob Purdy here soon. Yeah, yeah. And once they do that, it's gonna then be... it's going to change everything. Yeah, yeah. So the, their their Super Bowl window is closing yeah, very quickly. Like they've got they, they do at this current cases. at this current time they do still have the best roster in the league. I'd say when you have world, a it's rookie co- when you have a quarterback on a rookie deal still, especially the at the place where Brock Purdy got drafted, like He's you, very, you're going to have. Any money. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna be able to form a super team like this. Yeah. So, I mean, um, but the Brandon Ayuk situation is the worst. I mean, I 
Where do you think he ends he, up? He, I he actually probably doesn't think, move the needle. I, I, much, saw, I read something today. I read something today that they. I don't know how talks. Yes. I actually think Brandon Ayuk is going to end up staying with San Francisco. Yeah, I think there's a good chance. I've heard. There's been a lot of stuff going on, and I don't know what's legit and what's not. But he was at practice today, wearing team gear, which is good. Um, I think he'll probably resign. I think there there's rumors that there was a deal in place with the with the Steelers, but um, yeah, all they have to. I heard that all they have to do is literally make the phone call, and the deal's done. Yeah, it's just so, they're trying everything possible yeah. to extend Brandon Ayuk. But even if I mean Brandon Ayuk isn't there, I still think they're gonna. I mean, they're still gonna be really good because you have. Christian McCaffrey, you know, he's still one of the best players. You got Debo and, Debo. and Kittle. And Debo. Yeah, and Kittle. And that defense is still really good. Fred Warner, Dre Green. Uh, Dre Greenlaw, he's, is he going to be out for – probably out for He's going to be out for, for like the, the first year. half at least. That is that is probably why they lost the Super Bowl. It is. Because of Dre Greenlaw. Dre Greenlaw was having the game of That's his career. Yeah. He was everywhere. That. Yeah, That's, That's really, strange. really unfortunate. The four nine still really good. I think that as good as Brandon Ayuk is, he, he he doesn't move the tick that much just considering how insanely good the rest of this team is. Yeah. Okay, like if, if, if he goes to the for the Niners, no. yes. But if, if he goes to like the Steelers, he, then it would move the yes. tick a lot. It, but, yeah, it would yeah, but it's just because of how good the Niners are. I yeah. don't like. My, I, I I think with or without him, they're going to be in a similar situation, maybe a game or two. Games. Yeah. I thought you were about to say Brandon Ayuk doesn't move the needle for me. I was like. What are on the Niners, about? he does it. No, yeah, I agree yeah, with that. Let's, go to, let's go to a more boring division in the NFC South. I have nothing to say about any of these teams except the Falcons. The wretched South. All right, well, let's start off with the Falcons. The wretched um, South. Obviously. I think, I think uh, let me start with the Falcons. Right. Oh, Lord. I do have them winning the division, yeah, but I have them at 9-8. and eight. Ooh. I don't – I listen, the more that I look into this Falcon they situation – They did just get Matthew Judon. They did just get Matthew Judon, and I – I finished that, this. That was pre Matthew. This was pre Matthew Judon, but not that he, like, Kirk Cousins, sense. like yeah, he was good. I don't think he's necessarily coming into that much better of a situation. That's not saying that the Falcon situation is bad. That's saying that the situation in Atlanta was also, or not Atlanta, in Minnesota was also really good with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, T.J. Hawkinson, a decent running game, a decent defense, and a good O line. I would argue that he was putting up MVP numbers. He was. Right he was doing really good, and he tore his Achilles. Um, but even, I mean, even before that, like, I, I could see the Falcons maybe winning 10 or 11 games. I don't think they're going to be, like, a dark horse to, like, win the Super Bowl or make the Super Bowl in the NFC. Um, I still think their defense has some question marks. Um, I'm blanking on who they hired their head coach. I think mean, it was the Rams. Raheem Moore. Raheem Moore. Was Raheem Moore. Rams, yeah, yeah it was, he was the Rams guy, the Rams defensive coordinator. He, I mean, he, he's all right. I don't, like, we'll see how he is this year. Um, my notes, I have quarterback play propels Atlanta back to the playoffs. Uh, their O-line is good. Their defense is worse than it was in Minnesota, um, even though they've got guys like Jesse Bates and A.J. Terrell. Um, that yeah, that means, like yeah. Um, I would probably be more high on the Falcons if they didn't draft Michael Penix and actually address their pass rush. That's all. Awesome. Well, they, awesome. they, 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 they did just, just do that, though, with yeah. Matthew they could have. They, they could have, well, I mean, and they, did more. Yeah. yeah. They could have circumvented that altogether by yeah. drafting a guy they should have drafted yeah. with the eighth yeah. overall pick. Which I agree with that. But I, I agree. I'm still pretty high on this Falcons team. I have been since Kirk Cousins went there. I would make Kirk Cousins fan. I have him winning the division at 11 and 6. Me too. Um, I'm a big fan of Kirk Cousins. He was putting up MVP numbers, best numbers of his career before he tore his Achilles. And with the way like the modern professional football league medicine is. And Aaron Rodgers, I'm not concerned about the uh, about especially because Kirk Cousins is not like a mobile quarterback, and yeah. he's also five or six years younger, yeah. I think, than Aaron Rodgers. Maybe I five. think he's like three. I think he's like 36, and Aaron Rodgers is like 39. Aaron Rodgers is like 40, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's like 40. I'm pretty sure he's, he's pretty 40. Nice 40. I thought he was 40. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Anyways, he's he's he, he, he is younger. He is younger than Aaron Rodgers. I I'm not too worried about the Achilles. I mean, they got Drake London, they got Darnell Mooney, they got Kyle Pitts, who I hope will actually be used how he should be. They got Bijan Robinson, they got Tyler Azier. I mean, th- this is a good offense. I like this offense. And their defensive back room is very good with Bates and um, Terrell. I think that outside of the pass rush, which that was an interesting draft pick, we've already talked about that a lot, I think this is a good football team. I really like – assuming Kirk Cousins is fully healthy again, I think we'll see him return to those MVP numbers. 
No reason for you could, not yeah, to. Yeah, I could yeah. see it. His, 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 his receiving room is worse because he doesn't have the best receiver in the NFL, but like he has so a good. very good receiving yeah. room and a tight end who should be the best tight end in the NFL. Here's one more thing about the Falcons, though. They have a good starting receiver room. Their depth is non-existent. They don't have a lot of depth, but... They have zero depth. Once you Their get, wide receiver three is like Van Jefferson or something. Yeah, but Drake, Ray, 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 Drake, Ray, Ray, Drake, Ray, Ray, Drake Lundin yeah, and Darnell Mooney are both serviceable, and Kyle Pitts should be used like every like position like receiver, on the yeah. field. He should be used in the slot. He should be used at the X out there. He should, he should be used We've the talked about Kyle Pitts Kyle Pitts needs nausea. to be used every position. So I'm not quite as concerned about the receiver room depth because they got two good ones, and Kyle Pitts should be used at every position on the field outside of running back. And I think they have a really good running back duo too. Bijan Robinson is insane. Well, and the word on the I, street. I I was even I, we've talked about this fantasy wise. I would even take Bijan over Brees Hall. Like I like if it if I was in a I position know. of drafting a running back fantasy wise, like I could very easily be persuaded to you do. Could Bijan. Argue, you, you could, could argue, argue both ways. I'm a huge Bijan Robinson. Trust me. Son. Trust me. I you could argue both ways. Yeah, no, I, I love this Falcons team. Just, I got them winning the division, going to the playoffs. I also have them at 11 and 6 winning division. You pretty much covered a lot of it. Um, but, I mean, I guess we'll talk about it now. They just acquired Matthew Judon, who I think is a massive pickup for them. I mean, that's also I mean, if he stays like healthy. I'm probably in tough one, to like one, it in one, one of their yeah. biggest One of their biggest holes on defense is pass rush, and he, when, when health, 31. Oh. And when healthy, I mean, the last two years he was healthy in New England, he had 12 and a half sacks and 15 and a half sacks, and he had four sacks in four games going into last year before he got hurt. Why do they also got him for a third round pick? Yeah, so that, I, they, didn't, they didn't really give him up, up much to get him, so I think he helps that, off, that defense a lot. And, I mean, we went in, into pretty good detail about how good that offense can be, and I think I agree with them. Um, so, yeah, I think the Falcons are going to be a, a pretty good team this year. I think, I'll, I think it was one of those teams how kind of like – the Texans were last year where they had pieces, they just needed that quarterback. And now they got Kirk Cousins, and I think obviously he's going to help them a lot more than um, Desmond Ritter. Yeah, in my notes, I have QB play propels Atlanta back. Yeah, to the playoffs. I think we also have to um, keep in mind the biggest, um, the biggest move the Falcons made in the offseason. Firing Arthur is Smith. getting rid of the worst coach to ever the raise the Why didn't we have to bring We're him? not talking about this. Next I'm, team. Ju- <laughs> I'm just saying that is legitimately a big part of this team. The, addi- the addition, the addition of Kirk Cousins and firing the worst coach to ever graze the planet. Are they all our, are we, I have them as my four seed. Four. Three. Three for you. We both okay. have I have them as my four. I have them as my four. Um, only thing I'll like, I'd like to bring this up is... Word on the street has been said that the Falcons plan to use Bijan in a Christian McCaffrey type role. And there's I would that hope too. so. And that I, I would hope so that's too. But I'm if saying, that's the case, watch out. Watch out. And that's what I'm saying. Their yeah. offense is gonna be very fun to watch. Should I'm be. excited. This is a good team with yeah. a lot of freaking talent, versatile talent, yes. with Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson. Right. And Drake London. <laughs> Let's go. Well, Drake London is definitely Bay more of a receiver. He's definitely more of a receiver. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. We're done with Versatile Atlanta. Versatile talent Bay. wise. I don't got much to say about these guys. I, I have the Buccaneers as the. Uh, I got them going 9 and 8. Um, about 500, but winning record. I, I have them missing the playoffs this year. Um, I think that the rest of the NFC. Uh, the NFC has better teams this year than last year. So I got the Bucs missing the playoffs. But they, they finished 9 and 8, second in the division. I think we'll see a similar season as last year, other than the playoff run. I think Baker Mayfield is still a pretty serviceable quarterback. Mike Evans is almost a guaranteed 1,000 yards. He uh, is a guaranteed He is a guaranteed 1,000 yards. He's going to be a Hall of Famer when it's all said. Yeah, so barring injury, Mike Evans is guaranteed 1,000 yards. Chris Godwin is still right there behind him. Commanded large targets. I, I think this is still a good football team, and the reason I don't have them in the playoffs is because I think that there's a couple other teams that have really improved this year, like the Falcons. Because, um, yeah, other than the Falcons, I got the Falcons and the Bucks, and the rest of that division is a tier down. So the Bucks are still a good team. They just miss out this year due to the goodness of other teams. But a tier? You, I think you mean like three tiers. Yeah, I think I think this is still going to be a very similar Bucks team that we saw last yeah. year, except for the playoff run, though. They still got a good defense. I will point out that they lost Cana- Dave Canales or whatever to the Panthers, who I think that's not – I mean – We'll see. The quarterback. It's not – Allegedly. It's, it's not going to 
I don't think that's going to kill the Bucs. I think they're still going to be a good team. Yeah. But um, I do think that we might see Rashad White. Take a step um, back. Take a step back. But. Bucky Irving. Well, Bucky Irving. But on the same hand, Rashad White taking a step back is okay because he. But the other thing you got to think about, though, is that him as a running back wasn't quite as. Rashad White made his He's money into the passing game. Um, he's definitely a receiving back. So the Buccaneers did not run the ball well last year. Yeah, he was, they were like one of the it, worst. It was game. a problem. Their running game was a problem. So I think Rashad White will probably take a step back. But I think overall you're going to see a very similar team here. Yeah. Um, I have them at 9 and 8, second in the division. Um, I think their offense is going to take a step down this year because I think Dave Collins was a big part of that. And they brought in Liam Cohen, who um, I have. No firsthand because he was with Kentucky and Kentucky's offense has been pretty garbage recently. Um, so I don't think he's anything too crazy. I, I agree. I think Rashad White will take a little bit of a step back. Mike Evans took a thousand yards. I think Chris Godwin is going to have a really big year because he's going back in the slot, which he, which is when he's at his best. That offensive line is still really good. The defensive line is obviously still really good with Cansey and um, Vita Vea. They lost Devin White. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think this team's a solid team. It's just gonna kind of one of those middling teams that um, I think um, they're not bad. So, but they're not going to the playoffs. So nine and eight, and I have them third or second in the division. Excuse me. Um, I have them eight and nine, also second in the division. You guys kind of touched on it. Um, I have first place schedule along with an Asian core killed them this season. Yep. Asian, Asian, oh, not Asian. Good. Night, I was like, dude, because yeah, like they're they got good players, but they're not <laughs> yeah, particularly they're, they're young. They're, yeah, aging. they're an aging team. I mean, Mike Evans is thirty one. Yeah, and he's like their best player. Yeah, so but he's a guaranteed all thing. Yeah, he's a guaranteed all thing. But yeah, uh, eight and nine, second in the division. They're not gonna make. I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs this year. I could see them winning the division again. I think they have the talent on that team to make it a real run for the money with Atlanta. I still I think, think they're a good team. Money, yeah. But I, um, but yeah, they're second in the division. They're not. I don't have them making the playoffs this year. Nine and eight for me too. Um, second in the division. This was the other team as, with the Seahawks that I was on the fence about potentially, um, <laughs> but they're going to be out. And to piggyback off this, I wanted to say this earlier, but we kind of you know sped through it. I think the Cardinals could be this year's Tampa. Where they just come or, out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that point. <clears throat> All right. I think we're going to go about the team that just doesn't have a whole lot to talk about. Neither of these teams do. Are you talking I, the Saints? I'm talking the Saints. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you want me to go? Yeah. You, Five and 12. I mean, there's not a whole lot exciting about this. Aging, you can barely get the – you you messed yourself up with the cap. It, and it's plain and simple. Aging team, um, love Olave. Kamara has taken, and if you look at Kamara's statistics, like efficiency, wise, his efficient, yeah. yes, his efficiency. Thank you. Like yards per carry, and it's it's terrible. It's one of the worst in the league. It, it, it he he is, in terms of efficiency, he's not good, and I think that just goes to tell you a lot about even not only him but this offense. They're not efficient at all. It's terrible, um, and on the defensive side of the ball, aging. Like milk. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. Five and twelve, not good. Um, here I'm. I'm gonna. I have them at seven and ten. If I could swap the Cardinals and the Saints record, I would. Like I would have the Cardinals at seven and ten now, and I would have the Saints at five and twelve. Yeah, yeah. that um, should have been. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. Like I can. I can like. Rationalize the Cardinals five and twelve record. I don't know why I have the Saints at seven and ten. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Brutally honest. Yeah. Cause, I mean, um, they don't play any, but they're yeah. not gonna play a whole lot of good teams. Yeah, they have the fifth easiest schedule in the league. Yeah, their their offensive line is genuinely one of the worst in the league. Like they don't have one. Two of their starters retired, and the rest of their starters were terrible. They drafted uh, Fuaga in the first round, but that's one player. Um, I I I love Olave, but he's not gonna get the ball. Because Derek Carr, I don't think Derek Carr's good. Shit. Alvin Kamara's aging. They don't have an offensive line, so Derek Carr's not going to get protection to throw the ball through a lot of it. Um, and then their defense, well, they, they still have Cam Jordan, who is a, a sneaky Hall of Famer, yeah. if you look at his numbers. Yeah. Uh, they still yeah. have Cam Jordan, they still have DeMario Davis, but they're like, they're, they're, they're old. on death's door in terms of their NFL career. Like, they're going to retire at any moment now. Um, 
And I have in my notes, kicking the can down the curb does nothing. Because, I mean, this is the roster they had when Did Drew... you put, like, a, a little, like... Yeah, I put, like... I, I did, I've done this for, for all... Team. Yeah, for every team. I've done this... <laughs> I do this all... I do this every year. Um, yeah, I, they... This is the same roster they had when Drew Brees in this Twilight. And instead of scrapping it and rebuilding, which is what they should have done, because they weren't winning the Super Bowl without him, uh, they decided to pay everyone. And then pay Derek Carr. And now they're screwed. There's going to be, like, a, a time... In the next few years, where the Saints are genuinely one of the worst teams in the league, and it's going to be a solid two, three year period because they are in cap hell, and they they've done it to themselves. So, yes, they're in the division. They're not good. Um, uh, yeah, I have them at six and eleven. Um, pretty much the same thing you guys said. I did hear that. I don't know the truth of this, but the um, the Vikings. Might inquire about Derek Carr, which would, if they do, that could Spencer, 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 Spencer Rattler be the starter, which he's been doing pretty well this preseason. And then with him, the Vikings. But 6 and 11, I think, would be good for that. I have at 5 and 12, and I have them last in the division. All the same reasons. Okay. Right. Right. Hey. the team that finished last in the division last year? Uh, I got him finishing last in the division this year. 2 and 15. Wow. That's crazy. I, I, I just. They I suck. Want, you they mean they're terrible. The Giants. Yes. yes. I disagree. Yes, I do. The Giants took their best player in Brian Burns. <laughs> they did. I, there, there's nothing that's exciting about this team. Like, I get – here's what I was – I told I – I, Dave Canales is solid. He's solid, and but the I, still I, I don't think Bryce Young is a total loss. I don't think he loss. is either, but there's nothing there. I know you do. I think I they think have a couple of wins. Okay, I mean, Deontay, Deontay, Johnson, Deontay Johnson. Adam Thielen's aging yeah, wide receiver. He, Deontay Johnson, I did like that move a ton. Yeah. Because the dude just catches. He does get a case of the dropsies every now and then. Who's, who's that? But uh, their defense is terrible. Right? Who's the running back they picked up? Jonathan Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. But he's, he's going to miss the first like month. No, they got well, they Chuba Hubbard. Yeah. They have Chuba Hubbard. That's true. I mean, yeah, no. I, I also have them at 5-12. and 12. Record-wise, they're tied with the Saints. Um, it's, just but I, I, I don't think that Bryce – I don't think Bryce Young is a lost cause. I don't think he is either. I think, I, I think we'll see a little bit of improvement out of him this year. Because um, if not, I think they might be a lost cause. But, I mean, they're still a god-awful team. I just, I, I, I just personally think the Giants are an embarrassment to football. So I, 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 yeah, yeah, I could but, understand that. Yeah, I mean they have some young pieces like Derek Brown. I mean Derek Brown's a solid piece, but like JC Horn, Horn can't stay healthy. Jadavion Clown, are you trusting putting that much trust in a Jadavion? No, the Panthers are in a really bad spot. Yeah. They're, they're Listen, bad. Jadavion Clowney emerged as an elite edge rusher for the Ravens last year. Yeah, so I don't, well, I will see. I don't know. But, I, but is that? Yeah, are you banking your team on that? Are you like, banking on your team? Like, yeah. Oh crap! They still in the north, and this is the most exciting division. Yeah, of in the yes. NFC, I said. Um, Two and I have the Panthers at four and thirteen. Um, they suck. Yep. <laughs> um, in the north. I have them at three and fourteen. Uh, in my notes, I have genuinely terrible. Bryce Young gets replaced after this season. Ooh. Ooh. Dang. I I talked about this take. with them two when we were at Texas Roadhouse a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you this question. At any point last year, did Bryce Young show he was a capable NFL starter? Can't say. I can't say yes. Point proven. Um, I've said this with Zach that Wilson. Rookie year. I don't. I understand that in today's NFL, and he had negative anything. But here's the thing: him. this time last year, Personal we weren't back. saying that. This, this time, this time last year, not a single analyst. I do remember people saying, oh, their their receivers aren't great. But people were like, they got Brian Burns, J.C. Horn, their defense should be solid, mm. and their O-line shouldn't be terrible. Bryce Young should be able to do yeah, something. Yeah, so new coach. Their owner is a... Yeah, Dave, Dave Tepper's an idiot. Frank, and I also, Frank Reich was also just... A, he was a complete failure for the Panthers last year. Um, but even so, like, Trevor Lawrence's rookie year showed flashes. Peyton, even with Urban Meyer. Peyton Manning, his rookie year towards the end of the year, showed flashes. In today's NFL, if you are not showing flashes in your rookie year or early in your second year in the NFL, you're probably not going to be a good starter in the NFL. That's just how it is. Um, and I'll even piggyback off this. Anthony Richardson 
That's what I'm saying. Anthony Richardson showed flashes when he played. All right, you should have that there. We're getting there a little bit. We'll get, yeah, we'll get, we'll get there in a bit. But Anthony Richardson, I know he didn't play. Like, he played four games last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. But when he played, he was, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. really good. Bryce Young going to show that. I'll say this. We still got a whole nother I'll say game. this. Will Levis showed more flashes than That's what I'm than saying. Will Levis showed more flashes than Bryce Young last year. And we going into the year, we all thought Will Levis was going to be objectively terrible. Yes. Because of how he's yeah. still I mean, well, yeah, the jury's really still out on him, but okay. he showed more flashes. So that's that's my hot take about the Panthers. Let's move on to the North. Yeah, North. NFC North. Let's start off with this the team one. that has just a terrible day today. <laughs> is the They've had a terrible week. Yes. It's terrible, terrible, terrible offseason. The They're Minnesota playing. Vikings. Um, J.J. McCarthy is out for the year with the torn meniscus. Jordan Addison hurt his ankle. Both will probably be okay. Um, got carted off, so it's probably a... Yeah. They, they, said, they said, they said, but they it's said, not an they ACL. Said it wasn't. Oh, they did. It's okay. not an ACL. So they got a year. Um. So yeah. I, I will say this: the first day of camp, their top corner goes down. Yeah. Second day of camp, their number two corner goes down. It's just been it's awful. Been an off season, off season from hell. Yes. Yeah. They're screwed. They need to stay with them next year. I have them last in the division at three and fourteen. I, I think they're going to be very, very bad. This I have year. them at five and twelve. I had them at seven and ten before the JJ McCarthy thing happened because I do still think there is talent on this team. Um, with like Justin Jesse Jefferson. Jefferson, they got uh, Jonathan Bernard from the Texans. Yeah. Their defense in general was okay, but then JJ McCarthy's out for the year and Jordan Addison. Uh, got carted off, which I know it's not an ACL, but it's like high ankle sprain, like a severe That's high still ankle still a big injury. Yeah, it's still a big injury for them. Um, their corners go down. Also, uh, rest in peace, Kyrie Jackson. That yeah, happened at the beginning was, of the offseason yeah. for them. Um, it's just been I, – I have in my notes just send the next season. Yeah. So, I have them at 5-12, and 12, last in the NFC North. Um, I feel for Vikings fans right now. It's, it's bad right now. Yep. What do you have them at, Evan? Now let's get to exciting teams, Change which are the last three. <laughs> let's go to, let's go to Chicago. Let's go to Chicago. Chicago Bears. The Bears. The, the Bears. Bears. I got them at eight and nine. There you go. So just missing that 500. But I think it's going to be a step in the right direction. They need, they need something. I think Caleb Williams can help them. And with the supporting cast that he's been given, gifted from heaven. Um, That's a way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, mean, it's, it's as good as a scenario. It's as good a scenario as you can ask for for a rookie quarterback. Exactly. And, exactly. and I mean, far. I mean, the defense really is. Defense is good. It's good. Their defense is good. They it's were gonna, really good back half of last year. Because they brought, I mean, bringing in Sweat. Yeah. Ch- game changer. I, I was watching the Bears, like, floor and ceiling thing on YouTube a couple days ago. Montez Sweat led both the Bears and, and Commanders in sacks last year. Yeah. Jeez. I think yeah. that's like the first time that's ever happened yep. in a single season. A yep. team lead two, a player lead two different teams in sacks. Jeez. I have them eight and nine. In the division, though, I have them going four and two. Yeah. Who do you have them losing to? Uh, I think I have them splitting one. No, I mean like re- outside of the division. Is their schedule that difficult? I'm going to look at it real quick. Uh, their schedule's the 30s, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, I didn't think their schedule was that difficult. If you have them going 4-2 and two in the division, I don't mm-hmm. like... I mean, yeah. I'm 8 like, 9 whatever. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you get two <clears throat> cakewalk wins against the Vikings. so And then split one against the Lions. And I got them 8-9 and nine just outside of it. I got them at 9-8, and eight, the opposite of that. Just above... Winning record, uh, three and three in the division. So this is this is a good football team. Uh, this is the best supporting cast a rookie quarterback's probably ever had. Not ever, but like it's about the best Pretty you can close. ask for. Defense is good. Uh, they have a nasty receiving trio, a good running back room. Caleb Williams has shown so far in the preseason that he's probably the best quarterback in the class. Um, I think he's gonna. Hopefully, for my fantasy team wise, he'll actually end up being really good. Um, I I like the Spares team. Uh, I don't have them making the playoffs. I have them kind of being a game out. Actually, yeah, I have them one game out. I have them as the eight seed. So that that's where I got them. I got them at nine and twelve. That makes sense. Um, 
I like Caleb Williams a lot. I think he's going to be really good this season. DeAndre Swift adds a huge piece um, running wise. Then you got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunes. There's that's a phenomenal retreating the receiver trio. Cole Komet is a really good tight end. That offensive line has improved. Um, that defense with Montez Sweat, like Joel said, is really good. So TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edwins, Tremaine Edmonds, Jalen Johnson, who I think is is going to solidify himself as one of the top corners in the league. Um, Kevin Byard they brought in, Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker. This team is is pretty good. Um, and I think they're going to go 9-8, and eight, and they could even exceed that, I think. Caleb Williams could come in and kind of just hit the ground running, but they do. Their first couple of games are a little bit tougher, but um, I think next year, if they don't, don't do crazy, go crazy this year, I think next year they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. Yeah. Um, I have the Bears at 9-8 and eight as well. They are also my first team out in the NFC. I talked about earlier when I, I was this close to leaving the Cowboys out entirely. I was this close to putting the Bears in there. I, I genuinely think the Bears could be a playoff team this year. Um, they they have. I had them a game out. I yeah, that's, they, I could they see could, it. They could. I could. Gen, I could see them winning like eleven games. To be truthfully honest with you, that that's a stretch. They I, have, I mean, I, I think their cap would be like in ten, probably. I mean, no, I mean, eleven's they're, that they're, dude. Some K- games Williams I was on would have to go really crazy. But he's in, he's in the position to do that. He's got Keenan Allen. He's got DJ Moore. He's yes, got Cole Komet. But he's got Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze. That we're could just be the wide receiver one. Yeah, yeah we're just God, leaving God. out Roma Dunze. No, too. no. I, yeah, I'm just saying that. that. I mean, their defense is good. That's dude, just they have a good defense. Like, this is a lot of weight and a lot of pressure that we're putting on a rookie quarterback who's never played it down in football. No, I'm full. I, I know. If, That's what happens when you're a generation. Yeah, when you're you, it's expected. Like he, he should succeed. In this yes, situation. but I'm just saying. Um, if the Bears eleven wins is like that's an elite yeah. football. The the weakness about the Bears is head coach. I don't think Matt. I Eberflus also agree with that. I don't think I don't know why Matt Eberflus is still. Yeah, there. I think he yeah. should have been fired last year. Just had a whole new regime with Caleb Williams and company. Um, but I mean, I think the Bears. I have them at nine and eight. Very promising season next year. Expect them to take that leap. Um, I would not shock me at all if the Bears won ten or eleven games this year and were like the five seed in the NFC. Um. They, I think they're in a, they have a really good roster. I don't think people are talking about the roster. They have enough. Um, but I have them third just because I don't know how Caleb Williams is going to be, and I also don't like Matt Eberflus as the head coach. I agree with the Matt Eberflus part. I, I don't know why you said that. Uh, I feel like this is a new – I had an eight and nine, and, but they were still – I could see them, like Nick, being a 10-1 team too. I feel like this is a new like regime of Bears – Football and I just don't really know why Matt Eberflus. If is Caleb there. Williams, what has Matt Eberflus shown to prove that he should yeah, still be there? If Caleb Williams does not succeed with the Bears, the Bears might actually be cursed at yeah. the quarterback position. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, let's Agreed. go to their rivals, the Green Bay Packers. Ah, you this right here. I know you're excited. Go pack, go. Go pack, go. Go pack, go. You want to start? Or you want me to start? I'll start. All right. I mean, I don't really have like that much to say, except for the fact that I am I am very. Just go this team. I'm just kidding. No, not quite. But I am very, very high on the Packers. I really like the Packers. Are they winning the division? No, they are two. Okay. Because the team that we haven't talked about, I is just insane. What? I'm, I'm just wild. Kidding. I'm just kidding. I was gonna say no, but I have the Packers clocking in at ten and seven, and that is um, second place in the division and sixth place. In the playoffs, um, three and three in division play. I really, really like the Packers. I love Jordan Love. I'm a huge Jordan Love guy. I have been for a while now. I'm a big Jordan Love. Different props for the Jordan Love. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm a really, soft clap. I'm a really big Jordan Love fan. I like him a lot. He's an extremely talented quarterback. I think he's the next of the Packers' great generation quarterbacks. You know. Um, they got a good receiving room, man. I mean, they got like yeah, they do. it's tough because they don't have the. I they don't have that like Holly. They have that superstar name. They well, no, there's no there's no superstar name yet. But the part the reason that I'm saying it's tough is because the part I, is yet they haven't. None of the three receivers that they have has really separated themselves from the pack as being the this is the one guy. Um, I think Christian Watson would be if it wasn't for his hamstring and just kind of injury history. I am still really high on Christian Watson. He is a freak. This dude's a stud. If he's healthy, he's really freaking good. 
I love Christian Watson and Jordan Love combo. I love that. And then you've got Romeo Dobbs, who I think is very, very good as a serve, as a wide receiver two or three. Once again, he could be a one. All three, all three of these guys they have very easily could be their one. Like it's just they're all three that good, and none has really separated it to that point yet. So any of these three guys could be the one. And then Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed was the one last year. Um, I mean, it's just all three. This receiving trio is very, very good. Dontavian Wicks too. I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, he's also good. He even got him. So I, I think they're starting as well. Yeah, like, like all three. Like this receiving room is just so close. It's like in my mind, Watson is the one as long as he's healthy. Because I think Watson is a freak if he's healthy. And then you've got Reed, and then I think that third spot is Dobbs and and Wick or whatever his last name is. Wick, Wick, yeah. I mean, you got four guys that are all four at a relatively same level. Who any of them on any given Sunday could be the wide receiver one. I I love this receiving room. I'm a huge Jordan Love fan. They got Josh Jacobs in. Bless you. Thank you. Who I think Josh Jacobs is going to return as close as he ever will to his like year where he led the league in yards. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that we'll see him return to as close of a like as as he'll get to that. I like him with the Packers. Um, I, I'm a huge Matt LaFleur fan. I I really, really like this Packers team. I, Jordan Love. Honestly speaking, the Packers very easily could have won against the 49ers last year. Yeah. They, they, Jordan they, Love had a drive to win. Jordan, they, they are one, like, first-year starting stupid pass decision away from being the 49ers in the division around the playoffs. And – who knows? They advance the Super Bowl if they do that. Yeah, who, who knows? knows? I, yeah. I am a huge, huge fan of this Packers team. And Jordan Love with another year, Jordan Love with a full year starting under his belt is going to be scary because he is a talented quarterback. I love this Packers team. The only thing, only point I, I have defense Packers, little weak. I, I don't have the defense quite as good, but I mean you got Jair Alexander. I'm just going to bring up this on the offensive aspect. I have them 11 and six, six seed mine too. Um, my only downside is with the um, Josh Jacobs take. I just don't think, and it's been in the past, Aaron Jones was that that guy, right? Yeah. They have done by committee ever since LaFleur has been there. I don't think he, I think there's potential, I think he can. He's not going to be, I'm not but saying I don't that think, he's going to get, I'm not saying he's going to lead the league. I'm saying it'll be closest, like, I think, that, I think that he will have his best performance season since then. But, like, I don't think he's going to lead the league in yards and touchdowns. But I think that he is going to have a good year as a player. Like, I, I think that he's going to play well in this offense. I, like, can, I can see it. Like, it, it might be a committee. I think he takes the lead role in the committee. There's a guy. I, I, think, Lo- Lo- I think Lloyd. Yeah. Like, yeah, Lloyd. And I think Lloyd, Lloyd could give him a run for his money. If Josh Jacobs loses his spot to Marshawn Lloyd, like they shouldn't have traded for him in the first place. I mean, I, seriously, they didn't trade. He, he signed, they signed, him, signed him. They, they shouldn't have signed him in the first place. Then I, I think Josh, dudes, like, they shouldn't have signed AJ Dillon back. Yeah, they shouldn't. Have that that should is Dillon. the one because it's a crowded running back room. But I mean, I still the one. I mean, he's seriously, Jacobs is the one. Jacobs is the one. He's leading that. that but he's de- he's gonna get dudes like twenty five years old too. He's not even old for a running. He's gonna back. get carries taken. Yeah, but he leads it, and I think I don't think he's gonna lead the league in yards, but I think he's gonna have his best season like since then. Since then, yeah, yeah like statistically fair. as a player, I think he fits. I I think John, he's twenty five. What is he? Twenty five, twenty six. He's still young for a running back. Yeah, twenty six. Okay. I'm happy with that. I'm I perfectly to, happy. With that. I just wanted to throw that point out. But I mean, the, the defensive side of the ball, I'm not quite as sure about. But besides Jair Alexander, who might be the best corner in the league, maybe. He's up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, I, the defense, the defense yeah, is serviceable. Their defense has a lot more talent than people give it credit for. Remember Sean Gary? Remember Sean Gary too? Yeah, I just, I just honestly didn't know the Hold defense. That, Xavier, we call as that well. One. So Let's go, baby. I didn't. I, 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 you guys did do that. I didn't know the defense quite as well to be honest with you. So, but I, I really like this Packers team a lot. Go with the Packers. Uh, ten and seven, second in the division. Um. I think Jordan, I like Jordan Love. I think he's gonna build on the second half of last year. 
um, and continue to be very good. I like Josh Jacobs' addition. The wide receiver room, I think, is good. It's not great because you have a bunch of people, like, right here, you know, like, standout guys. Um, but I really like Jaden Reed. I think I li I think he probably is I, – I would put him as the wide receiver one. I like Jaden Reed a lot. I think he showed a lot last year, and I think he's going to continue to improve. Luke Musgrave showed a little bit of flashes last year as the tight end. Um, that offensive line is good. That defense with Kenny Clark, Deontay Wyatt, Lucas Van Ness, Rashawn Gary, Quay Walker, Jair Alexander, and bringing in Xavier McKinney. Um, their biggest hole was that safety room, and they brought in Xavier McKinney, who is young, coming out of one of his best seasons um, from the Giants. And, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be really good. They're just going to build on that momentum that they ended with last year. And they're gonna so. I have the Packers at 11-6. I have them winning the NFC North this year. I think they are going to usurp the Lions' throne. Um, it is mainly due because I think Josh Jacobs is going to add more balance to that offense. I think their offense is going to be less predictable. Um, I, I don't think their defense is getting talked about enough. They obviously have Jair Alexander. They added Xavier McKinney. They got Rashawn Gary there, too. Their defense in general was pretty solid last year, and they're all super young. Um, they were the youngest team in the NFL last they year. Were. Like, they're returning essentially everyone, except they they added Josh Jacobs, who's a, one of the better running backs in the league, and they added Xavier McKinney, who's one of the best young safeties in the league. Mm -hmm. I love Matt LaFleur as a head coach. Um, and I think they have an easier schedule than Detroit, who I have at 11-6 and six as well. I think the Packers won, like, in conference tiebreaker just because they play, like, weaker NFC teams overall, so they have a better record in conference. Um, but I, I think Green Bay is going to be really scary this year. Like, you're, you know, when the, obviously you know, the Bengals went 10-7 and seven the year they went to the Super Bowl. Could be a similar story with the Packers. I think the Packers are going to be really, really freaking good this year. Um and I guess I'll transition into the Lions, who, again, we, I also have 11-6. Like. Yeah. Uh, Packers are my third seed, by the way. They're my three seed in the NFC. Oh, they're uh, my sixth. Yeah. Just my sixth also. Um, the Lions, I also have an 11-6. They're my five seed in the NFC. Um, I mean, pretty similar situation. Um, I just – they have a bit of a tougher schedule this year. Um, and I think that – that will dot them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I have – I think they're one of the most balanced teams in the NFL. Yeah. They to be truthfully they honest with you. They have an elite O-line. Elite – not elite. The Lions receivers. can do whatever they want. Yeah, they can do whatever they, they can, can play however they, they want. They can throw the ball 50 times. They can run the ball 50 yeah, times. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. They've got a great running back yeah. tandem. Arguably the best O-line in the league. Um, Jared Goff is, like, at one of his peaks a very good in defense. his career. Um, they got clear, a, a top five wide receiver. Yeah, they've got top five wide receiver in Amon Ross St. Brown. They've got Josh Reynolds, who's like, eh. James yeah. Jamo, if he can learn how to track a football. The receiving room falls off after Amon Ra, but they got Sam Laporte in his rear games. Yeah, like they're, <laughs> they're good. And they've got David Montgomery in the backfield, too. Yeah. Um, I have I put Jameer Gibbs as a sleeper for Offensive Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. I talked about this when we did our running back rankings. Um, this is before he had his hamstring injury, so it's going to be interesting to see how that affects him. Jameer Gibbs is a home run rate waiting to happen. Yeah, he You is. get the ball in his hands, any play could be a touchdown. He is lightning in a bottle. He's like Devon H. Hand, but bigger. Yeah. He is that, he is that good. I That's think Jameer fair. Gibbs is that good. That's fair. Um, but, yeah, I think the Lions and Packers are two. Like, we talked about how last year there was two clear teams in the, in the Niners and the Eagles. Packers and Lions are right there. Yeah. In terms of teams that I think could realistically win the conference. Um, I agree with that. So that that's my take on the Lions. I like Dan Campbell as a head coach, too. He showed last year that he could actually coach mm -hmm. in a football game. Um, I don't see a reason why the Lions should take a major setback. They should be right there as one of the best teams in the NFC once again this year. I'm going to piggyback off you and get mine out of the way real quick here. Um, as you can know from – as you can know from just simple math and uh, and countdowns, uh, I have the Lions as my one seed. Um, I got the Lions thirteen and four. I can see it. Uh, I think the Lions are. I think the Lions very very easily could be the best team in the NFC this year. Um, I think that if you take I can't a, believe we're saying that. If you know? yeah. If you take away <laughs> if you take away some very questionable coaching decisions by Dan Campbell in the NFC Championship, I think they advance to the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's the yeah. That, I mean, that's that's real. Uh, th and this was a young team. This is a this was a young Lions team last year too. I mean, we, we I don't need to go that much in depth because we both kind of tag teamed it there. I got them thirteen and four, winning the division and first place in the NFC come playoff time. This is a really good football game. I'll keep mine short and to the point. Lions are my two seed. They go twelve and five. And I mean, you guys highlighted it. 
Yeah. This is a dang they, good team. They can, especially in the offense, they can do as they please. And I mean, I loved their addition to help their secondary this offseason, Terry on Arnold. So I just, yeah, I just, I really like offensively. They can do whatever they want. They can run the ball. They, they, can they, they improve they drastically they on want. defense, though. Yeah, they've been improving a lot. Aiden Hutchinson is getting up there. It's one of the best. Yeah, uh, you better, you better watch yourself there. He, uh, he is. He's not. Zach, you guys agree? He's, now Zach's like. Uh, uh, he's not. He's not quite really at that. It. He's not quite at that. Like PJ Watt, Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett level. But, uh, not even close. No, he's not. No, but he he is in the tier below. Like yeah, he's in the tier below. Yeah, yeah. but he yeah. he's young too. This is only his third Whoa. year in the league. Yeah, that's for that guy. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Seven, um, I have the Lions at 12 and 5, first in the division. Um, some of their best players last year were rookies, so they're going to improve. Um, obviously, Amon Ra, top five receiver. I think J Mo is going to be good, I hope. Word out of camp. Yeah, I've heard good things about him. That offensive line is probably the best in the NFL. Um, then they brought in DJ Reader, who I think is a massive move at D tackle. That helps them out a lot. Um, Unfortunately. Then you got. Uh, Jack Campbell, who he's gonna he's gonna play there, middle linebacker, and they upgraded that secondary. They brought in Carlton Davis, Terry and Arnold, Ennis Rakestraw. So that secondary I think is better. Now you have Arnold, Rakestraw, Davis, Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph. Um, I think that's a, a lot better than what they had last year. Um, and yeah, I think they're gonna be a, a a force to be reckoned with. But it's gonna be interesting to see them going from the the team that was like always like a kind of a sleeper team to now being the team that everyone is like hunted. they're the hunted they're the hunted yeah. so i think that's going to be interesting but um they play a lot of games they i think i heard they play three games not in a dome which is good for jared goff so um, <laughs> 12 and 5 they're my one seed um they're your one seed yeah all right Fair I, know, so I know you do but you had them in 13 and 4 well yeah. i have so I, I, like, I can see that i have both of them like, oh both 12 and 5 and 4 in the position so it's really a they're Awesome. But this thing has been a 